an ounce. A lesson in perfection, the perspective of a child. I'm Jim Fugate, and it's my privilege to share an ounce with you. I had a very simple and quiet, yet profound experience about 10 years ago in Winchester Hills, just outside St. George, Utah. It was a Sunday morning, and I was sitting with my wife in the pews at church. The speakers were sharing inspiring insights and doctrine, but I could not help but notice the activity of a child in the pew behind us. He was a little noisy and restless, as any three-year-old boy would be when expected to be quiet in church. And with the calm and gentle help of his father, he was doing pretty well, while his mom was engaged in cradling a young sibling in her arms as it slept. As I tried to pay attention to the message from the pulpit, this little guy kept diverting my attention. But I was determined not to be annoyed. He was doing the very best he could. And so was his dad. I was not going to turn around and glare at them. I just had a smile in my heart, remembering when my wife and I used to tag team and corralling four active little ones with huge imaginations and active minds during church services. To help direct this boy's attention and energy, his, his dad gave him some paper and a few crayons and encouraged him to create a picture. The boy did his best, but still he wiggled and squirmed and just kept talking as quietly as he could to the characters he was placing on the paper and his dad, who watched patiently over him. Apparently whispering was not something the boy was familiar with. When the picture was finished, he excitedly showed it to his father and pointed out the characters and the other things he'd made with the crayons. And then he began to note the colors he had used. It was surprising how well he spoke, considering his age. But then he paused a little and said, and this is Yowo. I know that's not how you say it. I'm trying, but it's as good as I can do it. His father replied, I understand. You are doing it really good. You'll get it right. The young lad said, Yeah, Yo isn't the right way to say it, though. And then I heard the most beautiful sermon. Son, it might not be exactly right, but I understand you. And to me, it's perfect. That father's statement clutched my heart in joy. And I was lost in a new realization. I better understood the context of the many things in my life that, try as I might, I could not do, and considered to be imperfect failures. Well, there are many little nuggets within this story, but let's just focus on one for now. So here's the ounce. Is there anything in this world that is perfect? Even a flawless, sparkling diamond has faults, and yet its value remains. Not everything we attempt will we accomplish. But even when we do, and call it perfect, there is a fault somewhere. So, how can we be satisfied that anything we create is good enough? And even if we considered our attempt a failure, could there yet be some perfection there? Though successful outcomes are desired, and even required, is it possible that perfection, at least in this life, might be found in an earnest, sincere effort, regardless of the outcome. Perhaps Yogi Berra said it best when he let this gem of wisdom out. If the world were perfect, it wouldn't be. And after all, Yewo, by any other name, is still yellow when it's spoken by a child, at least as far as I'm concerned. And that's it, an ounce submitted for your consideration.